what's up everybody i'm early with ready to love y'all <laughs> we getting ready to love on friday night ready to love season eight the reunion part one if you're brand new to the channel i break down tv shows one recap at a time interjecting my own thoughts opinions and theories into each and every recap so if you enjoy that type of content y'all go ahead hit that subscribe button for me um if you are a returning viewer that is not yet subscribed, you do the same. Otherwise, Charlotte, let's go ahead and get right into it. Don't forget to, as always, thumbs up the video, leave your comments down below. Um, everybody's foundation looked terrific. I don't know if it's the lighting that is going on, but everybody's makeup, everybody's foundation from the chin up, not even the neck up, the chin up, nothing was matching. At first, I was like, Jessica's makeup is off. Then I was like, oh, Unique's makeup is off. Oh, my God, Kat's makeup is off. It's everybody's makeup. It's the lighting. I also thought it was very... I didn't like how they would shuffle people in and out based on who they felt should be out on the couch at one time. Just have everybody on set like they used to. <coughs> Excuse me. And I know that they were doing this. Thought I had water. I know that they were doing this because there were so many different pockets of like beef within the group. But I think having the entire group on stage to me would have made a little bit more sense for a lot of these awkward transitions. But let's go ahead and get right into it. We first start off talking about the wild cards, which were Katarina and Christopher. Christopher got his little fro braided up. I said, okay, I loved his jacket. That like burnt orange sienna, whatever color that was, that looked really, really nice on his skin. He was just so happy to be here in this process and happy to join the group. He said he was nervous, but he was excited to join. Katarina said she hated it because she came into situations that were already kind of on and popping and going, which is true. So first package is Katarina. So we actually get to see when Marie let Katarina down that he was going to choose Jessica. She was crying, crying. I said, did she like him like that for real? That took me so off guard, y'all. That took me so off guard. I did not think that she liked him that much. I was like, damn, like I almost felt bad. I almost felt bad. Katarina then said that Phil and Herbert, while she had connections with them and was vibing with them, the reason that they didn't really work with her or like stand out is because they didn't have like positive aggression. And what she meant by that is they weren't kind of like, I don't want to say sweating her, but they weren't sweating her. They weren't like all up in her face and kind of throwing themselves at her and really applying the pressure that she wanted them to apply. Um, but on the flip side, I guess Marie was. So it seems like we just really missed a lot with Marie and Katerina. And I guess that would explain a little bit more as to why they ended up going so long into the process. Marie and Quentin both said that if Kat would have come in earlier or been, you know, at inception with the rest of the group, that they would have definitely been kind of all over her. Jessica's rolling her eyes backstage. Janelle's rolling her eyes. My whole thing is, why even, why be upset about that? If y'all are still with y'all dudes, why be upset about that? It's a process where y'all are dating everybody. But okay, Catherine said that Quentin was not even allowed to talk to her. And we know that because every time anybody so much has said Q, Janelle's ass will pop up, <laughs> like pop up. So Quentin said that he didn't want to go into anything with Katarina, um, yeah, with Katarina, because he knew he wouldn't be able to give her the full attention and commitment that he wanted. And i.e., you know, you were scared because. Queen Janelle wasn't going to let you talk to anybody. Keep it a buck, Quentin. Keep it a buck. So we get red. We get red and we have to relive the thought job comments. Okay. So we get to see the package again where uh, red was saying, everybody knows me. My name good in Houston. I wonder where they at Dallas. Everybody knows me. I'm good in Dallas. I run Dallas. I'm the king of the city going in. 
the way they were backstage being like, everybody knows you, laughing at him. <laughs> I would have loved to have that happen while everybody was on stage with him. Nonetheless, Red then says that he was not offended by Thought Job. Yes, you were. You were Thought Job having that lie. You were offended. You were offended by it. He said he just wanted her to stand on what she said. She did. She did, though. So, Nephew Tommy asks him, asks Unique, what, what, is the, what is the thought job? Well, let's talk about this. What is going on? Unique said, I never called him a thought. I said his job was one because he has access to more women. DJs, uh, physical trainers, promoters. Um... I said, I don't know. I've never called anybody a thigh job. But I can see, you know, ball players. Uh, name a ball. <laughs> Soccer. <laughs> name a ball. Soccer, football, baseball, basketball. Thought jobs. That does not mean that you are a thought. I still stand on what I said before. The fact that Qu um, Red took it as a thought job. You must be out here thotting, sir. That's really what it is. So Red said that he was never going to let it go. And you cannot buy thought jobs right here on my website. And as he's listing his website, Unique is talking over him. She then said, go on and say the URL again because I was talking over it. I said, she, she, <laughs> hey, Seuss. <laughs> so he was like, they know what it is. And it's like red. I don't think you really realize how stupid you look right now, babe. I don't think so. I don't think red fully understands how his reaction to what happened just made him look bad. I'm sorry, but it did. So Unique then said that, you know, I know information or something like that. And said he kept contacting her. Red said he didn't contact her. Unique said you sent me a DM and you text me. So he was like, okay, one time. She said a DM and a text. He was like, okay, twice. What is that? She said, well, that's, that's more than two. That's more than one. Is that not two? I said, Unique, <laughs> you making it seem like the man was calling you every hour on the hour. So she keeps saying she has information. Everybody's asking, what is the information? She won't say it. So then Janelle finally is like, look, if you're not going to say it, then let's move on from it. So then Tommy is like, what is it? Rhea wants to know. And Unique said that she has information that as regards to how he parents his children or his role in his children's lives. And everybody collectively was like, nope, 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 nope. So that's when Janelle was like, I mean, ex-partners, ex-wives and kids should not be even brought up. They are innocent in this situation. So Red then said that he has still been in contact with Janelle and Tequila. And I was like, are Quentin and, and Janelle not together anymore? I would think that would be a little bit of conflict of interest, right? We'll see. We will see. We don't need to see, I don't need to see Red anymore on my TV ever again. <laughs> At all. So we get to a Jessica and Marie situation where, sorry y'all, uh, Jessica and Marie. So the people in the back, we watch the package and everybody in the back is like, it ain't real. Thank kiss, thank kiss. Which is what a lot of the reviewers said too. I didn't say it. Um, I th think I just assumed that they kissed, but I know, um, was it Bell Perspective said it for sure. Queen E said it. Uh, I think Miss Misha said it. So a lot of, if you don't watch them, y'all go and watch those three. But I know for sure, like some people mentioned that they didn't kiss to like seal the deal. So Jessica <laughs> bumbles and stumbles and stutters through Tommy asking her, what did Marie do to set himself apart from the other guys? She was like, set separate himself and everybody in the back was like oh this is weird and it's like here's the thing he didn't pick y'all Katerina he didn't pick you sweetheart so sitting back and being salty and trying to make it seem as if what they have going is not real and not gonna suffice and all the other type of stuff I think that type of shit is lame personally I think it's lame he didn't pick you 
move on be done with it what are you gaining like what is it doing for you on the inside for you to sit and and be a part of the peanut gallery and you know what i'm saying like i've never quite understood that about these like reality shows you didn't pick me and she don't even like you and look you're gone the other do you want somebody that didn't honestly want you let's use a thinker so jessica finally is like oh um he um well, i only had one connection coming coming into the cash trip and it's like jessica girl <laughs> and i like jessica i don't think she's done anything or overtly like mean or anything like that i don't mind jessica marie said that no one was ever strong enough to remove jessica off her square so that's what it was for him jessica said they are in a great space of getting to know each other Tommy is like, what is that? Y'all dating? Yeah, we're dating. They ain't dating. <laughs> they are not dating. They are lying. It was clear they're not dating. He didn't have his arm around her. He didn't have a hand on the thigh. Nothing. Y'all are not dating. <laughs> so then we get Habibi's ass. Habibi comes back, okay? Habibi ap apologizes for the, what did he call it? Malefic things that came out of his mouth. He said he doesn't feel like he is the person that would say those things. <laughs> I was with Tommy. The stuff that we just saw you say, you don't think you're the person to say that? Sierra said that a simple apology would have sufficed, right? He said that sometimes parents like to put their own endeavors upon their kids. And she was like, because it's a fucking crawfish? And every like Tommy was like crawfish. What's going on here? Habibi is saying my first word was crawfish. Tommy then tells him you need to think twice before you say some of the things you say that are going to cause the ladies and just other people to have pause. Right? Habibi said it's not that deep. I'm just playful. <sighs> Then he says that he understands where they are coming from. Janelle said, no, you don't. Where are we coming from? Habibi said, I don't know. <laughs> I, said, what the fuck? I said, what are we watching? So he gets into a back and forth with Janelle. She's calling her bro. They're going back and forth. Janelle gets up and well, Janelle says that he did not apologize. Tommy said he did. He did apologize. It wasn't the way it wasn't a true I'm sorry. It was a, I'm sorry for the, for the things that came out my mouth. Maybe Janelle don't know what malefic is. That's that, that could be it. You know what? Should I do a quick Google? I don't know what malefic means, but if it's something popping, you know, I'm going to add it to my, uh, Maleficent. Is that what he meant? Well, that's what my, my caption said. Maybe I wrote down the wrong words, y'all. That, that could be possible, too. Nonetheless, Janelle gets up and walks out because she feels he's being disrespectful. Here's the thing. As much as, you know, we give it to Janelle and we say Janelle is mean and all this other type of stuff, Janelle was very right in her response to this, right? Far too many times when a woman feels objectified, belittled, um objectified belittled degraded you know what i mean when that happens to us as women and it has happened to probably every single woman you know what i'm saying we've all been cat called we've all had men make inappropriate comments about us whether about our body or something else right in that moment, if she is saying that she felt uncomfortable because this man that she has never met, when she turned around, said he's going to suck her titties. I think that's what he said. They keep bleeping it out. But if that's what he said, that's fucking inappropriate. It's inappropriate. No matter how you shake it, no matter whether you like Janelle or you don't like Janelle, it was inappropriate. I felt like in that moment, in that scenario, Tommy did not protect Janelle. Tommy didn't right because the way that they're going back and forth in this scene all he literally had to do was end it Tommy should have ended the conversation so when Janelle walks off set and Habibi kind of goes after her and he's trying to talk to her and she's like leave me alone get away from me y'all get him away from me 
I kind of feel like why did he why was he even allowed to go after her? So Habibi comes back to the set and I be good and goddamn if this man starts playing the saxophone. Y'all, the way I was sitting on my couch, like what is going on here? So Herbert is backstage comforting Janelle. Where is Quentin? Why is Herbert back there comforting you? Then we see Sierra. I feel like her name is not Sierra. I don't know why I feel like I'm saying her name wrong. But we see Sierra backstage and Habibi is telling her he want to take a shower with her. Far too many times on this show, we get into these scenarios where the women do not feel protected. The women are verbally assaulted in some type of capacity. That is verbal essay, right? For you to turn around and some man say he want to suck your titties, that, that's, that's verbal essay um, because it's unwarranted, it's unprovoked, it's uninvited. I, I don't know what needs to happen but Habibi should not have been allowed to follow after her. The fact that Habibi then turned around and said that to Sierra and Sierra didn't check his ass in and nobody said anything. It's, it's disappointing. It's very disappointing. So we then get to Marvin. So Tommy wants to know what made Marvin so comfortable talking about his BDSM fetishes. And he said, because it's me. I would rather come into this, lead with that, ask these ladies how they feel about this, that, and the other, than six months from now. Now he's pulling out, you know, whips and chains and 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 ball uh, ball clips and nipple plugs, or was it like a uh, butt plugs and nipple clamps? And he's pulling out all this type of stuff because now I'm looking at you like nigga, what? So yeah, I I felt him on that. And a lot of the ladies were like, you know, we applaud you for being true to yourself and bringing that out. It just ain't for us. So apparently Marvin and Unique talked a little bit after the show. Um, She said, but she felt like she was not number one in his life. Marvin said he met a woman that is more evenly yoked, equally yoked, I should say. Evenly or equally? Equally yoked with him. So I'm assuming she might, you know, dip her toe in the BDSM. And if that is who Marvin found, that's who Marvin should be with. Not somebody that's unsure about that lifestyle, but somebody that honestly and truly wants to be in that lifestyle. So good for him. Good for him. So then we get to Quilla. Okay. Okay. Y'all know if you've been watching my recaps, I'm not a person that likes to put stuff on people. I'm not a person that I don't like when y'all put in the comments somebody is bipolar. I don't like when y'all put in the comments somebody looks like they're on the spectrum. I've never been a fan of that type of stuff because I feel that it is wrong to take a moment that we see an edited moment that we see about these people on television and put a mental illness or some type of uh, disorder onto these people. But I truly believe that Tequila isn't all quite there, okay? So she said that she saw a softer, sweeter side of Habibi. Girl, if you did, you did. That's perfectly fine. She said Phil confuses her. She said that Phil once said that he eats the box first. And Phil was like, I did. What does that have to do with you now? Aries is back there. That's inappropriate because it's unnecessary to say. She then said, well, we never talked about what I found inappropriate and uncomfortable. Filing bankruptcy is one of them. And everybody's like, bankruptcy? Phil was like, yeah, that happened in 2008, 2009. I was in real estate. My company's collapsed. The way my jaw dropped. Tequila, are you fucking shitting me right now? That was so tacky and immature to do. So you went and researched this man, looked him up so that you can come on the reunion and throw that in his face all because he didn't like you? Phil didn't say anything negative about her. Not that I can remember at least. Wow. 
wow so then he calls her hella immature because you are sis that was so immature to do i cannot believe she did that that is wow that was so unnecessary to do so she was like yeah you're immature too you and the people on the couch talking about janelle and jessica Tequila then said that Janelle told her off camera that she does not agree with the tearing down of black men on camera, but then she turned around and was talking shit about Habibi. Tequila, there's a difference between Janelle feeling that it's inappropriate for you to put the stigma on Quentin that he looks like he dates white women and then Habibi telling her he's going to suck her titties upon his first time meeting her there is a difference she called that man a clown he has behaved like a clown he's behaved like a clown i think it's weird that tequila really goes up for habibi like this so tequila's out here rocking and shit rocking rocking like she's ready to do something so tommy asked tequila have you seen the clips of what habibi was doing and saying earlier conveniently no i didn't see them Oh, okay you the only one that didn't see the clips got it sis so she said that jessica and janelle would say rude things to her like she needed to take her pills girl you might you might need to do something your behavior is erratic you give off chaotic energy and not in a good way janelle said that there she didn't know that there was an issue she said tequila came in hot and heavy with everybody she said there's no issue there's nothing to talk about because she doesn't know if there's a problem nor does she care jessica whispers if she could fight us right now she would and she's about to try to so tequila was like fine and i guess everything's fine with me too meanwhile she's rocking right i've never been in a fight a day in my life i have never been in a fight 39 years old i have never been in a fight but I do know, because I have friends that have been in fights. I have cousins that have been in fights. I do know that when somebody is rocking like this, and they got all this nervous energy in the way that every time she says something, she's just, she's ready to fight. So they exit off stage. It's awkward. It's tense. Tommy didn't know what to say. Uh, everybody's very like eerily quiet. I'm sure you could cut the tension with a knife and they get backstage. Somebody, it didn't sound like Janelle's voice. Shit. It sounded like Aries kind of somebody said, Oh, here's a feather. So Tequila's like, yes, it's my feathers and I'm ready to do whatever. And it's like, girl, what? So then Janelle slams her hands on the table and Janelle shakes the table and said, Tequila, do you want to fight me? And now Tequila jumps up and Janelle said, you're getting your feathers everywhere. You're ruffling your feathers. And next thing you know, security comes out and Tequila knocks over a table and Lord have mercy. <laughs> Unhinged, unnecessary, but this reunion was boring. I'm sorry, but this was boring. This was a boring reunion. Let me know what you guys thought about it. If you have not already, don't forget, subscribe to the channel, thumbs up the video. Catch you guys in, I guess, next week for part two. <laughs>